Hey guys, so I've been wanting to talk about this for such a long time, but I wanted to make sure that I would be a very clear channel and I really wanted to go into meditation a lot and channel as much as I could on this subject because it was very controversial first off. So Yeshua and Mary Magdalene, there is so much distortion around these two people. <laughs> so, you know, I had to really go in and ask source a lot about them and what was going on with them too. So, you know, I've been shown different things and then I've had messengers come to me in different forms and I'm just going to give you the lowdown of what I have been told so far. So when I had my big awakening, you know, I didn't really question God that much. I did question him a little bit when it came to uh, the whole source and creator side of it. Because I had always been told in church that, you know, he's this big, scary, fire and brimstone guy. And I always knew God as love. So when it came to that, I was like, you know, what is this other side of things? Like, as far as source and creator and honestly, the doors just got like blown off for me around that. And it just had me searching for more and more. And I look at God as like my daddy and, um, you know, like a father and I'm a child and I can just ask anything and everything. And I love that about God. And then I started having the divine mother coming in and I just love that aspect. So, Anyways, you know, I started asking questions about Jesus because I felt weird about Jesus for some reason. And I think it was because I had always been taught in church that, you know, we got to pray to Jesus and he's this big savior and we're pieces of crap sinners and <laughs> um, someone is going to come save us. And like, but when is he coming? And like nothing around that made sense to me. And we're just waiting and waiting and waiting, you know, and I'm always going to be a piece of crap. And I was like, the, what? <laughs> so the more questions I asked around Jesus, and I, I'll say the whole thing about like he was God's son. I'm like, but wait, if we're fractals of God and God is in us, then where does the whole son thing come in? Because you're, if you're not even here, if you're God, the creator, but you weren't like an actual person, then what? <laughs> like, this doesn't make any sense. So show me, show me, show me. So anyways, they started showing me Yeshua instead of Jesus. And then they started showing me Christ consciousness. And that started making so much more sense and how we're our own saviors. And I was like, okay, this other crap about like someone saving us like outside of us just was like no 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 i can't handle that anymore and then they started showing me mary magdalene and i didn't even know who mary magdalene was like my church as far as i knew had never talked about her so i started googling her and then they started saying she was a prostitute and the seven demons and i you know just from my own personal past, like I had been called a whore when I was still a virgin, just because I had, I had big boobs when I was like in third grade. So come on, dude. Like anytime a woman is called a whore or a prostitute or something like that, and two, growing up around other women, you know how catty women are? Like that was like red flag central for me. So I was like, what? Like I got to know who this woman is. So I started asking for more and more messages around her. And I'm telling y'all, like, I'm telling, like, just boom, boom, boom. Like, everything was just revealed to me. So, when you talk about Christ consciousness, when you talk about Mary Magdalene and Yeshua, and what these two were bringing, and you start looking into the seven demons, the chakra system. That is what the seven demons were. They were going into the chakra system. They were going into clearing out, transmuting, and alchemizing. Because if you look at each one of those seven demons, it's specifically talking about issues within each of the chakra systems. And the ego, manipulation, gluttony, things like that. So, 
I started putting two and two together and then I'm like, this is sacred sexuality. This is divine union. Now wonder they're calling her a prostitute. And then more was revealed to me around Dendera, the temple of Dendera. This woman was a high priestess. This woman studied Tantra. This woman, of course she knew sacred sexuality. This is what we all, like any of us that have studied Tantra and sacred sexuality, know that you have to work with the chakra system if you are taught correctly. And then you to do this like prana, the chi, the life force energy, to get this moving correctly through the chakra system to get to Christ consciousness, which is divinity, then you have to go down to the lower three chakras. You have to get into the sacral and clear this out and alchemize it. There is a whole science to it. A lot of people don't understand this. A lot of people are not correctly working with sacred sexuality, with Tantra, with Christ consciousness, because they don't have a clue. So, this also goes back to my ancient lineage, the things that I was also doing, the things I was preparing for. So we've been in the same temple. So Hathor is who is also coming to me. Hathor, who is also still with me. We are all brothers and sisters of the light. Mary Magdalene was a high priestess who was preparing people. She was also a healer. She was preparing people through their chakra system to see Yeshua. So while people were coming, while people were waiting, then she was able to clear out a lot of these things. She was able to alchemize a lot of things for Yeshua. There's different techniques. There's breath work. There's um, light language. There's sound. There's different things that people can do to get these demons out. There's the same practices that we can still do as priestesses and goddesses that a lot of people think is woo-woo. It is absolutely not woo-woo. We are just in our power because we have also went through the work and we have cleared a lot of this out in our own bodies and we know how to do this. We know how to alchemize. We know how to activate and we know how to hold space for others. So when I was starting to be shown this, when I had remembrance of this, I could not not honor this. I wanted to speak on this because I knew that what they were bringing to this earth, to this third dimension, thousands of years ago, is what I wanted to bring to my earth and my dimension now. But I wanted to do it with the most integrity, the purest way that I possibly could to honor them, to honor the light, to honor source. To honor my lineage. But I will say this. Anyone in the church who can get up on the pulpit and speak blasphemous words from their mouth and know what they are saying and lead people into the abyss, lead people astray is wrong. Because just as I have known this wisdom and this knowledge they can know this wisdom and knowledge. And I think it is absolutely wrong that they lead people astray. They lead people like sheep into the abyss. 
and then to the darkness. When they could absolutely lead people into the light and let people know that they are their own healers. They are their own path to God. They are their own saviors to source to God. And they are leaving the mother out. They are leaving the woman out, which is the spirit. They have taken verses and books out of the Bible, which has the mother, the woman in it. And that is absolute blasphemous. It is absolute wrong. And if they know this, forgive them, Father. For what they do is wrong. So, any of this is public knowledge. This has been awakening within many people. This has been awakening within many preachers. And several continue to preach the wrong message. And for that, they will have to answer. So I love you guys. And I want the absolute best for everyone. And I want love for everyone. And I want truth for everyone. And integrity and honor. And I honor you and I love you. Have a wonderful night.